So what I'd like to do is introduce Snell's Law, and I'm not really going to give a mathematical derivation for it. I just want to present some intuition, get, show some cool simulations. So basically what Snell's Law tells us is um, what happens with refraction, and refraction just refers to, um, to how light propagates from one medium to another when there's a different refractive index. So that's why they call it, think about refractive. Refraction corresponds to changes in refractive index, which um, which can change what angle a um, electromagnetic wave is traveling through a medium, and that's what Snell's law is all about. So let's just kind of introduce this with explaining kind of what index of refraction is. So let's imagine we have a substance. Um, let's say we have a um, a barrier here, and we have some substance on the top that has um, n1, which in this case we'll say that's n of air, which is equal to one which is close enough and let's say it's traveling into a medium below that that has a different refractive index and 2 is equal to 1.41 so what's going to happen basically if you think about this uh, in terms of an electromagnetic wave it's coming down here and let's say it's got some amplitude that looks like this and up to this point it has this wavelength denoted here and we'll call this um, lambda 1 but what happens when it hits this interface, it's going to actually go slower um, because it's a, this is a different refractive index. And it's going to, what's going to happen is it'll keep the same phase at this point and that, because that frequency has to match here. But it's going to have a reduced wavelength. So it might look something like this. Yeah, not exactly, not the greatest, but you could imagine that if I look at the wavelength here, we'll call this lambda 2. And you can see that um, lambda 2 is going to be less than lambda 1 because it's traveling slower through here. So we could say that um, v2 here, or let's say v1, is just going to equal c because it's like it's propagating through free space or air, so it's close enough it's going to have the speed of light. But v2 down here is actually going to be c divided by n2, so it's going to be slowed down. It's going to go slower than it is up here. And this, what this does is corresponds to that, that wavelength, so our lambda 2 is going to be our v2 divided by our frequency. Um, but the frequency of these are going to be the same because they've got to match phases up here. So if you recall up here, just to clarify this, our lambda 1 is just equal to c over f. But lambda 2 is v2 over f. And it's going to be smaller because that velocity is going to be smaller. Um, so this is basically what's happening. And this is really key to understand what's happening with Snell's Law, just understanding what a refractive index is and what happens when an electromagnetic wa wave goes from something like air to something of higher index and it, and it slows down. But um, just to make sure we're understanding this, let's go ahead and take a look at a, um, at a demonstration. So this is a finite difference time domain model um, that I created in MATLAB. And it just shows what happens with a, a plane wave as it goes to a, something of a, a medium of, of increasing refractive index. All right, so what we have up here is a source. So this is like where this is the source where the, um, it's the electromagnetic wave is coming from. And you see it's propagating um, downward in this direction. And we'll see what happens when it hits this interface here. So you can see when it hits this interface, it actually, it actually um, slows down. Maybe you can see that with just how the time is progressing. But you see its wavelengths decreasing, too. Because up here, if we took like the peak to peak between these two blues, wavelength's about that long. But if I went down here, you see that wavelength is, is actually a bit shorter. And so it's shorter by that um, value of uh, 1.41. So let's move on to see what happens when we have a wave coming in at an angle here. So here I've, got, I've still got a, um, a source, but now it's coming at an angle. Let's say it's starting here, and it's going to be propagating perpendicular to this wave front here. So it's going to be propagating this way. And when it hits that, it's going to keep propagating through, but it's actually going to change direction. So let me just kind of predict what it's going to be going in about this direction. So a slight, um, a slight decrease in that angle from the normal as it, as it hits this. And let's see how that, why that happens. Okay, I'll stop it right here. So basically the reason this happens is you can see that this, um, the wavelength is, the, is through free space up here, but when it gets down here, it's through this other medium, so that wavelength has to shift. That dis distance between the peaks shifts on this side. But on this side of the wavefront, 
that um, that wavelength is still the same. I mean, it's still going to be a, a bigger wavelength over here. So what happens is when that the plane wave is traveling in this direction, but this side over here, this side has to slow down a little bit, and this side's still going the same pace. So when that side slows down, it ends up tilting it, and it goes this way. So let's um, go ahead and show that. So you can see now this is cr it's traveling according to that wave front, each of these wave fronts, and it's going to be perpendicular to those. So it's going to be um, down this line that I drew, which is going to be a um, smaller angle with the normal. Okay, so I got this interface in between them here. And if I go ahead and make this normal vector or this normal line to the plane here, it might look something like this. So let's go ahead and call this angle here theta 1, and this is going to be the angle of incidence. And we'll go ahead and call this angle down here theta 2, and this is going to be the angle of refraction. And it's important that I draw these angles up here to know exactly what angle it's it's coming from. It's the angle from that, that ray to the normal in both cases. It's to, the, it's to the normal. So based on what we've defined here, we can go ahead and present Snell's law. And Snell's law says that our n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2. So this is Snell's law. Um, what we showed here is kind of the intuition of behind how it works. Um, but if you're not satisfied with that, stick around. I got another video and it'll explain mathematically how we get that. So if you're interested in that, that's going to be next.